Are you getting a little bit bored by AI? Well, I am too. So today I want to show you how to get more refined and creative results where you have much more control over the process. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Before we get started, I want to show you different results here. We have more of this collage drawing style. Here we have an even more collage painting style that is very nice. This one here is again a collage style which ripped papers that combines photo and painting and sketching together. This one is more of a painting style, pretty abstract, but also very nice at the same time. Here we have something that is a little bit more on the darker side, but I would still say it's very beautiful from the result. Another one where I applied also a crown to the head. Now here the crown doesn't fit 100%. This should be a little bit more improved, but Overall, I like the vibe that this is giving me. This result is also very interesting with these cute butterfly ears up there and the blue stripe in the middle. And then I went even more extreme with that with these kind of neon tribal kind of looking paints on the face. And then at the end result, we go super abstract with different parts of the face resized and cropped and then a different style applied to the same image. So we basically looping this image through different creative processes to create something completely different. And in case you wonder, this is actually the starting photo of the image you have seen just a second ago. So first of all, yes, this is inside of ConfioEye. I tried to make it happen in Automatic 11.11. It didn't work in the same way. And also in ConfioEye, I have full control over the process and full control over where the elements are so that I can stay in the creative flow. And this is just the most important part about being creative. Now, I know that at this moment, some people type down in the comments, it's too much notes, it's too complex. Just install ConfioEye. Art is difficult. Art is complex. Art is the search for a solution for a complex problem that is your own expression. So pressing one button is not the way to do that. Working through the process, finding your own solutions, building your own machines and train your own models, that is artistic process. So today I want to give you a perspective on how I play with these tools. So let's get back into ConfUI. So here you can see I have my image input here. I have my style input over here. I can even have a second style input down here. And then in the middle here, I have my output. And below there, I have my prompt so I can adjust it to the image I want to create. But of course, this is only part of the story because we need to have some more control over what we want to create. And one thing I want to point out here at this point is at this process, I don't really pay attention to the accuracy of the face. I don't care if the original face that I use as an input and the face that comes out at the end is exactly the same. This is not the task of this process. The task here that we want to achieve is to turn our input, our vision, our idea into a more creative output by applying our concept and the style that we like and put them together into a final work. So of course, what we need is style input. You can do that by going, for example, to Pinterest, which is a great source for inspiration. You can see here we have all kinds of different styles for collages, but you can also find a lot of portrait and photo styles and so on. You can also go to pages like Pexels, where you can find free images for download that you can actually use even in a commercial way. And there you can also find pretty cool works and also interesting inspirations that you can combine with each other. There's also pages like Unsplash, where you can find even more inspiration and again, images you can download and even commercially use for free. So that already is a really good start. On top of that, you can go to stock pages like Envato Elements. Now, I'm personally not a fan of that page, but they allow you unlimited downloads for a very low price. And they have an interesting function here where they have 3D models. Now, these are not 3D models for download, but what you can do with them is you can position them in the 
direction you want to have them and then click here on download this angle and it's going to render for you a high resolution image with a removed background so you can actually photo mesh pretty quickly with this method and also have the different perspectives in here of course this is not a perfect solution you can't adjust the light you can't adjust the camera angle or the distance from the camera so there's some downsides but overall you can find a lot of interesting assets on here after you've found everything you need you could go for example into a software like affinity photo now the benefit about affinity photo is this is a one-time purchase however you can also use photoshop which has a lot more tools in there also ai support so there's a lot of functionality in there for a very low monthly price i think about 10 bucks where you have photoshop and lightroom lots and lots of power for editing and refining the image after it has been created so think about that too now in here you can see I found a photo that I want to use and now we can go into the creative process. So for example, I was inspired by seeing that butterfly on the mouth. So I found an image of a butterfly and then I selected the butterfly and did a color adjustment to the butterfly. And first I thought, hey, why not put the butterfly over the eyes? And that's certainly creative. You can do whatever you want, but take into consideration that the AI model actually kind of has to understand what you try to achieve because otherwise it can't render the image for you. So I wanted to go with a kind of cuter version here and actually make wings of the butterflies into like these Nico cat ears. So it's kind of closer to what the AI model understands, but at the same time has an artistic expression. Another element that is always creative and looks inspired and artistic is to just add some random abstract shapes to your image. So for example, here, I just have a stripe in bright blue over the face. I set this to a blend mode, in this case, vivid light. So it's reacting to the background and not making everything the same blue. And then because the background is rather bright here, I just took a brush and roughly paint it around the character so that the face is brighter than the background because this is also taken into consideration. Of course, you can play around with this in any way you want and find millions of different ways to get creative with this very simple preparation of the photo data. And of course, also you can photograph yourself in all kinds of perspectives, face expressions, anything you want. There is no limit to creativity, my friends. But let's go back into ConfUI and have a look at what is happening here. So the process that I'm going through here is very simple. It's actually just IP adapter style transfer. And here you can see I'm using the Chugganaut version 9 lightning model. I have here my positive and negative prompt. Now here I have this converted to an input. You do that by right click and then down here it says convert either to widget, which is the text box, or to input, which of course is the input. The reason why I do that is because I want to have this text box actually down here below my image so I can render without having to scroll left and right in this workflow. I just want to stay in the flow, adjust the input, adjust the prompt words and get the results I want. Of course, we are going here with a K sampler because this is a lightning model. I set it to six steps, CFG 1.5. I have the sampler DBM++ SDE with the scheduler normal and denoise 0.9. So I have a little bit of an image input in here. You can also see that I'm using a VAE encode to encode the image that I'm using that we created in Affinity Photo just a second ago. Of course, you use the VAE from the model and then use that as the latent input. At that point, you want to make sure that the resolution of the image is not too high. So I scaled down the image by a lot. When we're looking at the image, you can see that I scale it down to 1000 by 1334. Then down here, I have my nodes for the control net and the IP adapter. If you don't know how to use IP adapter for style transfer or install these models, watch this video to figure out how to set everything up. The control net uses the prompt for positive and negative. It has the control net input and also the image input. Now, of course, in this case, the image input is the image that we created 
inside of Affinity Photo so that it stays closer to that composition. I'm using the SAI Kenny model for SDXL. I find that that works really good. And then down here, I have the control net preprocessor. You can use here the Kenny processor, of course, for the SDXL version, resolution 1024. And then over here, we have our first IP adapter. You can see here that I set the value pretty high at 1.25 and the start at zero and the end at one. So it is there for the full process. But really, I want to encourage you to play around with these values to see what you get. And here for the IP adapter, we have here the weight of style transfer SDXL only. And below that, I have here the plus high strength model in the IP adapter unified loader. So both of these are important. Now, I also can use a second style if I want to. So you can mesh together multiple styles in the same image. For that, I have down here the same thing again. I have my IP adapter plus and I have my IP adapter. Right now, these are bypassed. This is why they are violet. So if you want to activate them, right click on that and click here on bypass and this is then activated so you can see i have here the same settings basically here this one is a little bit lower but again play around with the values to see what you can get from that because they are working in series after i have applied my first ip adapter i will have the output of the model go here into the ip adapter unified loader and then go out again into the IP adapter so that the second IP adapter can be applied. And then this is, of course, going into our case sampler as the model. So all of that process is pretty simple. Now, of course, as you can imagine, for the first IP adapter, you can see here we have an image input. I am loading the first image I want to use. And then optionally, if I want to have a second image, I can load that second image down here if I want to. At the moment, I don't want to do that. So let's bypass this and it's not going to use the second image. It's only going to use the first image. As you can see, the style is beautifully applied, but at the same time, it's taking into consideration what I have created over here. Now, here is something that's really important at that stage. The prompt has to describe what you want to have as the end result. So you can see here, it says artistic illustration portrait of a black African woman, colorful abstract face paint, neon light, glitter, butterfly wings on her head, dark background, bright face. In this case, it says illustration before I had photography here. It didn't have too much of an impact because the IP adapter style is so high. Now here you can see I'm using a different input. This is actually from Pinterest, very beautiful painting style. And I'm applying this to the image. Now I can see down here, I basically have the same prompt, but I'm using painting as an input. I didn't really make too much difference in this case. However, it still has a lot of use to play around with the words, even though the words might not be applied directly stylistically in the result, they still have impact on how the result is looking. So play around with the prompt and again, also play around with the settings on how strongly this style is applied in the IP adapter. Another advice I want to give you here is that you, of course, can also use the images you have already created with the help of the AI to use them again as an input and apply a different style to that with different settings. So for example, in this case here, I changed my values for the IP adapter. So it is at 0 0.75 and I changed the denoise to 0 0.8. So the image has a bit more impact. Now let's try the denoise at a value of 0 0.6. This is the result we get from that. And you can see that is a good mix between the painterly abstract style on the left, but this also brighter and then the darker, but more photographic style on the right. And we have a very nice combination in the middle. So I want to highly encourage you to go down the rabbit hole and play around with the creations, add some stuff to that, and then even bring that back into your photo software, adjust it, and then re-enter it into the rendering. For example, here, I cropped out different parts of the original image, resized them, and changed the color with a hue shift. 
then I use this as an input. As you can see, we get a very interesting abstract output that looks a lot like an artistic painting. So with that, you can go really deep into the rabbit hole. Let me know in the comments if you have used similar creative methods to create your AI art. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like that and see you soon. Bye.